Hello? Can you hear me? Hang on here. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Um, wow. Uh, hey, thanks for all coming. Uh, things are changing so fast. I, I, I've, I've put together about 18 PowerPoints, and, uh, and everything is changing so fast, I'm not sure which way to go a lot of times. I've got my standard PowerPoint on, but you know, uh, if you really want to know about my work, I've got books back there and DVDs, and you can you can read about it. I've been essentially studying alchemy for about 30 years, and I've uh, uncovered a cross in the south of France that basically predicts, it's a 400-year-old cross built by an alchemist, and it basically predicts at the end of time is going to occur, occur uh, between the years of 1992 and 2012. And this was a uh, research that was done completely, uh, uh, you know, uh, n without any knowledge of the of the exactitude of the Mayan calendar. And uh, ironically, uh, John Major Jenkins and I lived about 15 miles apart from each other while the research was, his research on the Mayan calendar was reaching its crescendo, and my research on the cross of Hende was reaching its crescendo, and we didn't know each other. And we met 10 years ago, and we had a great relationship ever since, comparing notes and trying to figure out all these things. But 10 years ago, in 1998, when we were just finishing up with uh, all this research, uh, you know, I, I was like, okay. You know, I was a journalist, and I discovered this, and I didn't know whether it was true or not. And so I said, I'll sit back, and I'll watch, and we'll see what unfolds. So do um, you have the uh, PowerPoint up? PowerPoint. Yoo-hoo. PowerPoint. Hello. Yes. Yeah, we're talking to you. PowerPoint. Yes. Okay. Uh, can you click on one so we can start and know where we are? Anyway, so um, I'm going to run you through that real fast. But you know, uh, so anyway, uh, it's pretty obvious now to me that the world is reaching the end of this age, and I don't have any more doubt about it because everything is collapsing so fast. And uh, so, you know, we can say, we can, we can wax, uh, you know, uh, fearful about what's about to happen because the greatest, uh, the greatest catastrophe in human history is unfolding in front of us. It's a huge crisis and it's systemic and it's, it's not going to go away. It's going to get worse and worse. Unfortunately, if you are a follower in this world economy, the future is going to look grim for you. If you are not a member of the world economy, you're probably going to be all right. And uh, so they've, they've, they've kind of hoodwinked themselves into believing in this false security of, of a world that was built on an infrastructure of uh, commodity speculation, uh, uh, printing up money, and it was all false, and it wasn't real. The only real things in the world as far as an economy are, are transportation, manufacturing, and agriculture. There's nothing else. Okay, everything else is just stuff they stick up there. And what we've done today is we've addicted ourselves to oil. Uh, we sold all our manufacturing jobs off to other countries and um, our agriculture is all based on oil. And oil's now at $60 a barrel, but soon it'll be back up as soon as uh, uh, the election's over. They will uh, be jumping it back up and it'll get back up to $150, $200, you'll see. And, and you're going to see a lot of problems really begin to happen as society begins to collapse at that point. I guess I don't get a PowerPoint, right? Okay. And uh, so, what is this all about? And, and what can we do about it? That's really the question. And, and, and we, I could go on with alchemy and I could show you all these incredibly spiritual things that predict this. And, and we, but I think we're already beyond that. We already know that the Mayans were right. We already know that the end of this age is at hand. And if anyone doesn't believe it, they will very soon. Okay, so let, let's just dispense with is it happening and go to the next level. Okay, it's happening, so what do we do? That's really where we are now and where we're going to be going for the next four years. And, and four years can happen really fast. So basically, you guys know about The Secret, you know, the great movie that sold 60 million DVDs or whatever. 
And, and the secret actually is the secret. It's the secret that has been esoterically hidden for millennia. And it, it actually it is a superficial telling. The movie The Secret is a superficial telling of the great secret. And so the secret tells you that, you know, that, that, that this universe is, uh, this is malleable, a plastic, malleable universe, and that you can rearrange it with your consciousness. That's basically the secret of alchemy, the secret of all secrets. Okay, and, it, it, and, and rich people, and I know a lot of rich people, they all know this, that have known it for years, and that's how they made all their money. And, but the problem with the secret is, is that it's teaching you how to get, you know, sex. It's teaching you to live in, that if you want to be really happy, you need a 15 bedroom house in Beverly Hills. And um, it, it, it's just not going to work. So, you know, the Chinese say, be careful for what you ask for, because you'll get it. And so in the secret, what they didn't teach you is that you have to have discipline for what you ask for, because you will ask for something, and then you'll find out you actually didn't want it, and you'll screw your life up. So you've got to be really careful. So the whole point of, of, of knowing the great secret of consciousness is to be really careful what you're asking for. You know, you don't ask for, you ever see this movie Bedazzled with Brendan Fraser? He gets anything he wants. He gets, the devil gives him three wishes. And he wants to be a rich guy. And he wakes up and he's a Colombian drug dealer, right? <laughs> with the U.S. military coming after him. You know, but he's rich, you know, so he got what he wanted. Anyway, he never gets what he wants. It's a great movie if you want to know the downside of the secret. And um, is it on yet? Okay. you can flip to the next one, please. Yeah, if you could put it up. Thanks. So anyway, um, what 2012 is about is it's the secret of the secret. And it's, it's saying, okay, we now know the secret. You know, big deal. I can get anything I want if I really work at it and, and dream about it. And you will, if you, know, if you, if, if you do it right in a, in a compassionate way. But what 2012 is about is we are collectively deciding what kind of world we want in four years. And this is the first time that I can think of in human history that this has occurred. That any group of people is collectively considering what world is going to be there in four years. We think about next month. We might even think, if you're a business person, you're thinking, you know, three months. But, you know, if you're pregnant, you're thinking nine months maybe. But you're not thinking much more beyond that. And now we're actually thinking, what kind of world do we want? And if we all... We don't, we don't have to agree on it, but by having a discussion, we're going to reach a consensus. And what, you know, there's all these conspiracy theories running around these days about, you know, the dark sorcerers who run the planet and all this, and the web is filled with all this stuff. But what really is going on is that the wealthy people know the secret and have been using it, and it looks like dark sorcery to all the people who don't know the secret. And so they, they've built a future that they want, and now it's time for us to build a future that we want. And that's what this is really all about. Could you flip to the next one, please? We're going to flip through here. Click. Hello? Okay. Anyway, uh, we'll get that together before the end of the lecture. Um, so um, th th that, that's really the question is, what kind of world do we want to build? Now, you guys know about this guy. Um, he lives up in Seattle. His name is Cliff. He has two names. We don't know his real name. Cliff Webbot or Cliff High. Anybody know him? Raise your hands if you know who I'm talking about. Cool. You're going to love this story. Okay, so we're going to call him Cliff Webbot because he don't want anybody to know who he is. Cliff Webbot's a genius, and he worked for Microsoft, and he retired about 12 years ago with a million bucks, or two million bucks or something, and he, did, he wrote a program. He's a, he was a genius programmer, and he wrote a program ostensibly to get rich on the stock market, purely selfish reasons, which, you know, makes you immediately want to pay attention to what he's doing. And... What, what, what he, he, he can speak like 30 different languages. And so he wrote this program, and this program trolls through every single thing that's going on on the Internet, every website, every email that's public, every newspaper, magazine article, everything. And he collates in, on all these different languages, and he collates this information, and he runs it through this thing, and it tells him the emotional content 